Boy, I, I got the EMI solution for you. Let me tell you what, this this split core, this is going to solve all my problems. Mm, I don't know about that. I have a solid core, and I think it's much better. Well, um, we'll have to see about that. Yeah, we'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. Hi, I'm Mike. I'm Bennett. And this is Soft Magnetics Hard Topics. Oh, yeah. So what are we talking about today now, Bridget? Um, yeah, my name is Bennett. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing at Ferrite, uh, also known as Not Bridget. Um, so today I wanted to um, talk about a common question, which is the difference between a split core and a solid core. Mike, why do we make both of them? Yeah, sometimes you just want a split core, and sometimes you just want a solid core. Well, do me a yeah. solid and explain why we would do we would have a difference. Here. So, in a lot of ways, the two the two cores can be used interchangeably. So you can have a you know, these these two are both a thirty one material core, you know, solid version of it, split version of it. You can see the sizes maybe from the camera being as far away, but you can see the sizes are vaguely the same between them. You know, not whole lot of difference in there um, but there's you know reasons you might use one versus another uh, the uh, split core obviously is is convenient you know you can just write onto a cable no need to unterminate it or anything it can be snapped right on there solid core requires a little more forethought you have to have no termination on one end um, Got to be able to slip it through the cable. Yeah, it's got to be able to slip through the cable. There's a little bit more consideration that needs to be taken with how you would fix this. You know, sliding around isn't inherently too much of a problem as far as the functionality of it, but these are ceramic. You don't want them banging around on the cables if you can avoid it. Um, what are the um, pros and cons? I mean, why wouldn't everyone always get this style? To split because it works in both conditions. Yeah, it, it does. But there's so there's a few reasons you may not want to use a split. So one of the big reasons is going to be the plastic case. Now the plastic cases limit the the ferrite is made at you know well north of two thousand degrees Fahrenheit, but the plastic case can't survive that kind of temperature. The plastic case needs to be you know plastic, right? It'll get soft, it'll melt, it'll open up. So that's that's one issue right there with them. Uh, another thing that could be potentially so another thing that could potentially be it actually could be a little bit of a, a feature or it could be a bug depending on how you look at it. The fact that these are split from a performance point of view. Now these are are sized. These two cores are sized specifically to be relatively equivalent to each other. Split cores will generally have a little bit of an edge at higher frequencies than solid cores. Really? So the effective permeability of this material is actually lower. So it's going to act like a slightly lower than 1500 permeability material, which is the permeability of 31 material. Uh, what that does is shift some of the performance envelope for suppression out to higher frequencies, but you lose some at the low end. So it's a little bit of a, a trade-off there. Why is that happening versus the solid core? They're the same material, same shape. Yeah, same material, same shape. But you know, if you picture your flux going around in this direction, there's a little bit of a gap here. That gap has a low permeability. Mm -hmm. So even though relative to the overall length of the path, it's a pretty small fraction, it's still that permeability of one brings the average down. A the fact that it's two pieces will always impact the permeability. Yeah. Okay. You know, the advantages of this, obviously it's very convenient. Um, it could be snapped on and off. You could try a bunch of different combinations for, for different stuff. Uh, this has some built-in isolation. So manganese zinc ferrite is like uh, 31 material conductive. So if you're around high voltage, this provides you some amount of barrier to mm. it automatically. Mm. Uh, and it also has, you know, tabs for a fixation to a, a cable to be able to hold itself in place. Oh, so it won't slide around in the cable as much. Right, right. Um, you know, kind of the, the opposite of that, the solid core, this doesn't have a way to hold itself onto the cable as easily. So these are really well suited for things like overmolding processes. So overmolding processes, you 
going to melt this onto the cable with the plastic surround to it. The core is not going to get damaged because of that heat, whereas the plastic case, we tried to overmold this. This will probably have a lower melt point than your overmolding. Yeah. Um, so that's an issue there. Cost wise, these will be less expensive. So it's easier to produce, right? There's yeah, less to it. Like mass wise, they're, they're pretty similar to one another, but this is produced as two halves. This is ground here and here to minimize that air gap. That's something that Ferrite does to keep the split core performance as close to a solid core performance as possible. Is we uh, mechanically grind after the production process initially is finished, we mechanically grind these surfaces so they produce you know next to no air gap. But that takes time. Mm -hmm. um, that's extra steps. The case has a cost associated with it and assembling the whole thing. So these will generally be, you know, a bit pricier. So it's fair to say that if you can get it done with a solid core, do that. And if you can't, go with a split. Yeah, the, yeah, and and you know sometimes because we do an equivalent of each, sometimes the the workflow is to prototype with this, uh, get the material that you need. We have. Nice selection charts that can tell you what type of material you're looking for for your application. Or you can do the scattergun approach and try eight different ones and see what works best. Um, but you can prototype with these relatively easily. And then in production, you may go to something like this because that may turn into an overmolding process. Or cool. I think that explains it. Cool. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Bennett. Mike, where are we today? So you might have noticed that our lab looks a little bit different today. Um, less bookshelf, more fancy, brand new. Um, actually, we'll go behind the camera and show you. We're quite proud of our uh, our neon sign here. So we are at the, the TV Rhineland Northeast Innovation Center and Technology Center. Innovation and Technology Center? Something like that. Something a lot like of innovation, that. and we are at a center. Yes. So this is the grand opening of it. This is the... Ferrite booth. booth. We're here to we're here to solve signals, and uh, and we're surrounded by anechoic chambers. So if someone has an issue, they come over here, get the ferrite, solve the problem, go back to the chamber. Yeah, come see us in TUV Rhineland, Foxborough, Massachusetts, yeah. with a B. Yeah, B is in Fox and B is in Borough. Not F as in Fox. No, or Borough. There must have been a lot of foxes <laughs> in Foxborough.